the discovery of over one tonne of gold at Blacksmith's Hole, located in Ballarat's Canadian Gully, marks one of the most remarkable events in Australian Gold Rush history. Worth approximately 122.83 million Australian dollars at the current gold price, it's considered one of the richest alluvial shafts ever dug, not just in Australia but possibly globally. The concentration of gold in this particular shaft, coupled with the fact that miners reportedly extracted an ounce of gold per bucket of earth, places it among the most productive alluvial gold mining operations ever recorded. This video speaks about one of the earliest discoveries of ancient buried rivers in Victoria, known as Deep Leads or Paleo Rivers, which forever changed the course of gold mining in the state and the country, enriching it beyond measure. It tells the story of a man known as Canadian Swift, which is an awesome name by the way, a miner from California's gold rush, and his early contributions. We'll look at the hydrodynamics behind the gold concentration, and the broader impact that this discovery had on Victoria and Australia's transformation into one of the richest places on earth at the time. Canadian Swift, one of the first miners to uncover surface gold in Canadian Gully in 1851, played a significant role in putting this area on the map. Known for his perseverance, Swift dug deeper into the hillsides when others focused on surface alluvial gold in streams and creeks, leading to further exploration of what would become one of the most famous gold fields in Ballarat. One section of Canadian Gully was situated on the White Horse Ranges hillside in Ballarat East, where it extended down into the valley below. Sovereign Hill, a well-known outdoor museum today, is located on the actual site of the famous Canadian lead which ran directly through what is now Sovereign Hill. This is significant because Canadian Swift and the early miners in the area dug into the hillside, only to find rich alluvial gold deposits. This was an unusual approach at the time, and it was even mocked, since most miners were focusing on flatter areas and streams for easier to access gold. However, the hillside location of Canadian Gully proved to be incredibly rich, leading to the discovery of the Canadian Deep Lead beneath layers of sediment. For reference, he was digging a shaft 25 metres higher than the surrounding land, but his early successes inspired others to sink shafts on higher ground. If you're enjoying this video, please do me a solid and click the like button to help YouTube recommend it to other viewers. Canadian Swift, though mocked, was an experienced miner from his days in California, and he knew that hillsides contained placer deposits, but he wasn't expecting to find a hidden river buried beneath the sediments on a hillside of all locations. While specific figures on its exact width can differ slightly across various sections, leads in the Ballarat region, including the Canadian lead, were typically 50 to 100 feet wide, or around 15 to 30 metres. Keep this figure in mind, as it's important for what we'll discuss later on. By 1852, miners working deeper in Canadian Gully had uncovered further deep leads and many other leads that flowed into it. These leads were ancient riverbeds, buried under sediment for millions of years. Swift's early efforts to explore this area directly contributed to the eventual discovery of the Deep Lead system, including the rare and spectacular finds at Blacksmith's Hole. The incredible success of Blacksmith's Hole can be attributed to its strategic location, where three Deep Leads converged, Scotchman's Gully, Sailor's Gully, and the Prince Regent Lead. It's highly unlikely that the miners who sunk this shaft knew that this location was a strategic one, but it wouldn't be long until they realised that they had struck a level of success unlike any other. If you enjoy videos like this, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified of every time we upload. These ancient rivers, now buried under sediment, met at a confluence before flowing into the Canadian lead. Hydrodynamics played a significant role in concentrating the gold at this exact point. When multiple rivers converge, the water velocity decreases, creating ideal conditions for the heaviest particles, such as gold, to drop out of suspension and settle at the bottom of the river, in very specific locations that are dictated by a myriad of factors including the shape of the riverbed, the flow rate of the water, and any natural obstructions like rocks or bends. At this confluence of three leads, the interaction between different water flows caused a reduction in speed, allowing gold to settle more easily. As the water flowed into the Canadian lead, it straightened with a slight bend. This was a crucial factor in concentrating gold. As in straightened sections of rivers, gold tends to settle along the edges where the flow slows further. The location of the blacksmith's hole at the inner edge of a very small bend in the river 
right at the confluence, placed the miners in a perfect position to access these concentrated gold deposits. The hydrodynamics combined with the natural geology of the region allowed for the accumulation of extraordinary amounts of gold. As a result, the claim yielded over one tonne of gold, making it one of the richest small claims in Australian history. The area came to be known as a jeweler's shop because of the incredible concentration of gold found there. Miners struck gold in such quantities that claims were yielding 1,600 to 2,000 pounds per man, an extraordinary sum at the time. The Whitehorse Ranger's alluvial deposits, in particular, was proclaimed to be one of the richest areas ever opened, with miners reporting finding gold by the hundredweight, meaning in today's gold price they would earn $4.57 million. In some of the holes, gold was so abundant that it lay three inches thick in small hillocks, leading to sensational rumours of a table of solid gold being discovered. The difficulty, however, was as immense as the rewards. Miners had to dig holes as deep as 140 feet through waterlogged, unstable ground that required constant timbering and maintenance, a process costing upwards of 200 pounds per shaft. Despite the success of Blacksmith's Hole, the miners faced challenges beyond the difficult work of mining. Reports indicate that other miners, eager to share in the wealth, intersected the claim from adjoining areas, stealing gold from the blacksmith's whole team. This was a common issue during the gold rush, as miners tunnelled into neighbouring claims in search of rich deposits. But the theft did not stop the original team from extracting a tremendous amount of gold, but it added an element of tension to an already high stakes operation. The wealth of the Canadian lead was not just due to hydrodynamic factors. The Whitehorse Rangers, located adjacent to the Canadian Deep Lead, played a crucial role in depositing gold into the ancient river systems that formed the Deep Leads. The quartz reefs in these ranges had been eroding for over 400 million years, slowly releasing gold particles into the surrounding waterways. These quartz reefs, rich in gold, were continually broken down by natural processes such as rainfall and erosion. The gold, carried by streams and rivers, eventually settled in deep leads, where it became buried under sediment. Over millions of years, the gold-bearing gravels accumulated in these ancient riverbeds, creating the rich deposits that miners like those at Blacksmith's Hole would later uncover. On geological maps, we can see the lines of gold-rich quartz reefs that were listed and crushed to extract their gold. There are numerous ones on the White Horse Ranges. Unlike other areas of Ballarat where miners had to break through tough basalt layers, which is volcanic rock, to access deep leads, the Canadian deep lead was covered primarily by sediment from erosion rather than volcanic activity, but I'll get back to this in a second. This made the gold more accessible to the miners working the Canadian leads, although they still had to dig through thick unstable layers of clay, gravel and sand to reach the gold bearing gravels below and they had to contend with the never-ending flow of groundwater. The absence of basalt was an important factor in the success of the Canadian Leeds, as it allowed miners to access the rich gold deposits without having to contend with the hard volcanic rock that made mining in other areas more difficult, or that obscured its existence entirely. But as always, I've got to be honest, this area puzzles me. How were so many deep leads buried by sediment when they had been flowing for millions of years unimpeded? Did small-scale volcanic eruptions occur here, which eroded away by the time miners reached the area? Did some other form of tectonic process occur that is not yet clear to us? This remains a mystery that is unsolved, but I'm going to try to offer some speculation. On magnetics, there are small, tiny, dome-like structures that resemble highly eroded volcanoes right along the lead. I'll outline them for you. The modern-day Canadian Creek runs alongside these deep leads, but it's tiny compared to the aforementioned size of the deep lead rivers that used to flow here. So I'll let you make up your own mind regarding why these leads were buried, but I think volcanism and then sedimentation played a role in that order. I find it hard to believe that Whitehorse Ranges had just eroded so much that it buried a 30 meter wide river when it has been in existence for hundreds of millions of years, but I could be wrong. The Canadian lead is famous not only for the vast amounts of gold found in Blacksmith's Hole, but also for the discovery of some of the largest gold nuggets in Australian history. In January of 1853, three massive nuggets were found in the Canadian leads, including the legendary Canadian Nugget. Shortly after, miners uncovered the Sarah Sands Nugget, and another unnamed nugget, 
These discoveries made Canadian Gully one of the most celebrated gold fields in the world, and word of it had spread everywhere. The discovery of the Canadian Deep Lead, and Deep Leads more broadly, forever changed the history of Victoria and Australia. By opening up vast new sources of gold, Deep Lead mining fueled the Victorian Gold Rush, which brought thousands of people from around the world to the colony. The influx of immigrants and the wealth generated by gold mining transformed Victoria into one of the wealthiest regions on the planet. The city of Melbourne became known as Marvellous Melbourne during this period, as the wealth from gold funded the construction of grand buildings, roads and public infrastructure. Melbourne's population and economy boomed, and it became a global hub of commerce, finance and culture. The effects of the gold rush rippled across Australia, helping to fund infrastructure projects, establish new settlements and stimulate democratic reforms. The discovery of deep leads like the Canadian lead not only enriched the miners who found them, but also laid the foundation for Australia's growth as a nation. The story of Blacksmith's Hole is a rare and extraordinary story of luck and fortune. From Canadian Swift's early discoveries to the hydrodynamic forces that concentrated gold at the confluence of three deep leads, the success of Blacksmith's Hole is a remarkable example of how geology, luck and perseverance combined to create one of the richest small claims in history. If you're like me, you're probably interested in the gold fields of Melbourne. I just wanted to give a shout out to another gold prospector, who recently uncovered a beautiful 3.3 gram nugget in the Melbourne gold fields. Be sure to check out his channel and subscribe to show him some love. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description and in the pinned comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching. Are you interested in animals? I've just started a second channel called Paleozoology that discusses extinct and extant animals with a current focus on the megafauna that once dominated and roamed Australia. I'd love to have you along for the journey as more videos are released. You can find a link to this channel in the description and in the pinned comment in the comment section. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.